to PC gaming and especially to PC building, then chances are you've encountered a whole slew of technical terms and jargon that everyone seems to understand but that sound like pure gibberish to you. Those of you who are veterans on this scene probably aren't going to learn anything new from this video. But in case you are new to this, here's a video made just for you where we'll decipher a few of the technical terms you've probably encountered and elaborate on each of them. The main topic today are the three acronyms from the title, GPU, CPU, and APU. But we'll also touch on things like bottlenecking. They may sound similar and they do have some inherent similarities, but at their core, these three terms are quite distinct and we're going to highlight these distinctions. So without any further ado, let's begin. GPU stands for Graphics Processing Unit, and it's responsible for rendering. Everything you see on the monitor is there as a result of your GPU's labor. From simple things like images and videos, to more complex things like video games, professional animation software, 3D rendering, and so on. GPUs and graphics cards are technically not the exact thing. For example, the RTX 2080 is a GPU, a chip developed by Nvidia with its own specs like CUDA cores and so on. We've made a whole video video like this on CUDA cores that we've linked in the description so we won't go into extra detail on them here. But this chip is the part that does the actual calculations necessary to render and then display something to your monitor. Graphics cards, on the other hand, are all based on this GPU. They all have the chip inside them but they vary in other regards like cooling and VRAM and so on. So while there's only a single RTX 2080 GPU, there are numerous graphics cards that utilize this GPU. So some faster, some slower, some with two fans, some with three, you get it. Regardless, you can refer to the two as interchangeable for all intents and purposes. We just wanted to explain this right now to prevent any further headaches. You may also have come across the term eGPU, which stands for External Graphics Processing Unit. This actually refers to a separate enclosure that houses only a graphics card. The graphics card in question is like any other, but instead of bunking in a PC case with all the other hardware components, it prefers to chill in its bad cave. It also connects to the PC via Thunderbolt 3 connection instead of a PCI Express by 16 connection that all the other graphics cards use. This connection is slower, but it's an excellent solution if you want to equip your laptop with some extra performance or simply lack room in your PC case for the graphics card that you have set your sights on. In case that eGPUs have tickled your fancy, there's a link in the description to the video listing the best eGPUs currently available on the market, so make sure to watch it. Now, Besides normal GPUs, be it in the form of regular graphics cards or regular graphics cards but with their own bat caves, we also have integrated GPUs. These GPUs are mostly usually integrated with the CPU, but they can also be integrated into a motherboard. So this is where the distinction between GPUs and graphics cards come in. Integrated GPUs have the chip and nothing else, not even their own dedicated VRAM. So instead, they have to use regular system RAM. They're way cheaper than actual graphics graphics cards, but they're also way less powerful and best suited for casual users. But more on integrated graphics when we go into APUs. So for now, let's just switch gears and talk about the CPU. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit. It's also commonly referred to as a processor. But in the most basic sense, a CPU is just an extremely powerful calculator. So powerful, in fact, that it's able to handle countless computations and calculations at any given moment. It's also the brains of every computer in the sense that it tells all the other components what to do. Nowadays, CPUs are made up of billions of tiny transistors and divided into several cores. Each of these cores is capable of handling a single task at any time. By extension, single core CPUs that you thankfully don't have to deal with anymore, even in smartphones, are only capable of handling a single task at a time. And the way they gave off the illusion of multitasking was by switching between tasks really quickly. Besides cores, one of the most prominent specifications of any CPU is its clock speed. This speed is measured in gigahertz, where each hertz equates to one instruction. So if you have a 3 gigahertz CPU, you, it can handle 3 billion instructions each second. So obviously the faster the clock speed is, the faster and the more powerful your PC will be. Each CPU has a core clock speed which is the default factory clock, but many CPUs can be overclocked so as to be even faster. Be warned, however, that doing this will make the CPU generate more heat. So if you plan on overclocking, 
clocking, you'd better make sure to have great cooling solution that can keep up with this extra heat. But of course, the most important component for gaming is still the GPU and not the CPU. Do remember though that we've said that the CPU is the brains of the computer that tells all the other components what to do. That includes the GPU as well. So if you have a ridiculously powerful GPU and a CPU that's underpowered by comparison, the CPU will not be able to get the most out of that GPU. It's like in school, you were way better at certain subjects than everyone else, so you finished the task at hand much earlier and then you just stood idly by. That's how GPUs feel when they're being supervised by an inadequate CPU, and this is what we call bottlenecking. Now thankfully, you only need a mid-grade CPU to get the most out of even the most high-end GPUs, but you can always play it safe and check how your desired hardware components will fare on sites that calculate bottlenecking. We've left a link to one such site in the description. And finally, there are APUs. Now, even some people that know perfectly well what CPUs and GPUs are may have a bit of trouble with APUs. And that's perfectly understandable since APU is a relatively new term. It was coined by AMD in 2011 when the first generation of APUs were released. This acronym stands for Accelerated Processing Unit, which doesn't really tell you all that much. So what are APUs exactly? Well, in essence, an APU is a single die that has both a CPU and a GPU in it. If this sounds a lot like integrated graphics, that's because it basically is. There is a technical difference between APUs and integrated GPUs, but they serve the exact same purpose, to offer entry-level graphics to budget PCs and non-gaming laptops. So we will use integrated graphics as an umbrella term that covers APUs as well. Just know that there is a technical difference. Unlike other integrated GPUs, however, APUs can actually be rather powerful. For example, both the PS4, the Xbox One, and their 4K variants use AMD's Jaguar APUs. As for PC gamers, they currently have the choice among the A-series APUs, Athlon APUs, and Ryzen APUs, which scale and power in that order. So if you're looking to game on a budget and don't want to buy a dedicated graphics card, we highly recommend getting one of the latest Ryzen APUs, as they genuinely push the boundaries of what integrated graphics have been capable of. So to summarize, the CPU is the brains of the computer that tells everything else what to do, the GPU is essentially the graphics card, and the APU is a form of CPU with integrated graphics. At the moment, the only two names in the CPU business are Intel and AMD, and in the GPU business, these are Nvidia and, once again, AMD. If you'd like to know which company is better in which field, we've made videos for that as well, so go right ahead and check them out. And that about does it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you find it informative and consider sharing it as well if you think this is something your friends ought to know. Also, there are more videos like this one coming, so if you don't want to miss any of them, you'd best click on the bell icon to get a notification whenever a new video gets uploaded. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.